Hello, Damien. I am muted. You you were. <laughs> I've been muted this whole time. Oh my god! And I've been <laughs> flying along through each I, slide, I wondering. I it was me. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where the um transcript was i thought that they had changed the transcript because i wasn't seeing that on the <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. it's a thursday <laughs> it is a thursday it's a very thursday thursday yes it is thank you so yeah. um let me start over <laughs> it's a me a damien who forgets to unmute himself um and where's rabbit ears and we have a community project we adhere to the code of conduct we laugh at it ourselves sometimes it's very important to do um upcoming schedule is wide open let me know if there's something you'd like to look at um besides me forgetting to unmute myself there's a bug fix release of drupal 9 this week there was also a bug fix release for drupal 7 i think it was last week beginning of this week in, in the last week or so that fixed a bunch of stuff, especially for PostgreSQL. Um, then to reiterate, Drupal 10 being postponed until August, that the original timeline to release it wasn't going to work because some of the tasks hadn't been completed by the March deadline. So to give themselves some uh, extra time and relieve the pressure they postponed it till August so here's hoping that works out then Drupal 7 was marked or its end of life was delayed until 2023 so November 2023 giving it a full extra year of support and that's full support um, it's not into any retirement phase yet and another big detail is that by next summer, the core team, Drupal Association and security team leadership will make a decision on whether to extend it further or let it finally go into long-term support, kind of like what happened with Drupal 6. And then they're continuing to work on replacing the Drupal testing infrastructure, Drupal CI with a similar system that comes with GitLab called, drumroll, GitLab CI. And uh, uh, that is moved into, has moved into an alpha state and they're working on trying to uh, finalize the default in, um, configuration for testing. Uh, so that new maintainers don't have to um, come up with the configuration on their own. So again, if you have any experience working with GitLab, help would be appreciated there, and especially in the GitLab channel on Drupal Slack. So at that point, other than pointing out, Damien, you're still muted. Anybody have anything they'd like to share? Hopefully I'm not still muted. No, you're not uh, muted. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot to share, but I think we've got little time. Yeah, cool, thank you. So this week we're going to do a bit of uh, follow-up on the Gatsby module. Uh, as mentioned before, the Gatsby module is an integration point for working with the Gatsby JS platform either self-hosted on your own infrastructure or using the Gatsby cloud system. Uh, the idea being that you manage the Drupal, you manage your site's content in a locked down admin interface, and then you push the content to the Gatsby static site generator that then generates HTML files um, on a cloud account, server, whatever. And then it is significantly simpler to run your site on the front end side because 
you've got a static site. It's just raw HTML. It's kind of like the boost module um, on steroids. So uh, we've been working on finishing version two of the module and I wanted to check in on the progress there. So um, I have one of the things that we'd been working on as part of version two was a major refactoring of how the module worked. It had a whole bunch of sub-modules and they have all, for the most part, two out of three of them have been either removed entirely. Actually, okay. One of them was removed entirely because it was redundant. One of them was merged into the main module because it's kind of, uh, that's how they want to, we want to have the system work going forward. So it, it didn't make sense to have it as a separate module. And while doing that, it gave us a chance to rename and simplify some of the APIs so that instead of, for example, all of the services having a Gatsby underscore prefix, in addition to the Gatsby dot, so these be Gatsby dot, Gatsby underscore, something or other. Now they're much simpler, uh, just Gatsby dot preview, Gatsby dot path mapping, and that's Gatsby dot logger. Um, makes it a lot cleaner and a lot simpler. And uh, one change is that it now depends on the JSON API extras module to do everything because it uses that module to generate uh, a JSON representation of the uh, entities that are being passed over. Uh, so that's kind of where that is. The project has, uh, actually, let me give you a quick demo. So this is a simple site that I built using the Umami theme, and that gets pushed to a Gatsby Cloud account that shows up as a simple site like this. I use the generic Gatsby Drupal starter project to build the uh, output. And this gets rebuilt every time I make content changes. So for example, if I add a new article and do a quick test. Use my lorem ipsum generator to generate me some lorem and ipsums. And then hit save. That pushes its way over to Gatsby. Um, let me see, where is it? And then eventually, if I Check in the Gatsby Cloud dashboard. It shows that there is data coming in and then it gets built live on air. If you check the raw logs, it will show all of the steps where um, it goes through and builds the whole site from scratch. This, I must say, I have not put any effort into configuring the Gatsby side. I just started with the bare bones um, starter, updated it to use Gatsby version four, um, which was needed for one of the, the newer options. Um, I think I might've made one change to have the homepage show 10 items instead of three but it goes through, um, goes back, it queries the JSON API endpoints in Drupal to get the data. And then when it is finished, um, not quite finished yet. 
um, it updates the static site and then does some other stuff done uploading build results and built it took a minute to do that again this is completely unoptimized it's out of the box tripping over itself because Damien doesn't know what he's doing but then I get my blog post yay um, again complete bare bones I haven't done any customizations on it but there you go um, so the last bit that I needed to, f or we needed to fix on the version two was that um, some of the optimization refactoring that had been done ended up removing too much. So this uh, patch here fixes uh, the builds that before we're showing up with no content, so you'd have items here that had no content, no title, and then you click, you couldn't click onto them because there was no link, and then the pages themselves are blank. So this has been fixed. So the last thing here is to uh, apply the patch, add, and then Scroll down, let's see, update the commit log. Um, uh, both Jay and I worked on that, so git commit and success, make sure that it committed correctly, and git push. And then committed after some additional manual, manual testing. We'll follow up in other issues if additional changes are necessary. So change status fixed and hit save. And all done. So now if we take a look at the plan for release candidate one. Um, there were a couple of items, uh, some of which do not seem to cause problems specifically. Uh, just more additional tidy up. I'm going to remove those from release, the release candidate one plan. And so that has been done. Make fast builds the default build system. I think this is effectively, I'm gonna mark it as postponed because I think this is how it works now. Um, leaving this postponed as I think it might be working like this now. And then, this has been done, so tested with a few projects. Seems to be okay now. We'll open up additional issues if any further problems are found. Um, so, go back to the release candidate one plan. Uh, document changes to core, other modules based on that. So, this is, has been done. The, doc, the items have been documented. I'm going to remove this from RC1 as there are, there's some additional testing to do. Um, but it's not a blocker at this point. 
the system appears to be working as intended. And then the last item is uh, general comment that it wasn't working right. So I'm going to post a comment saying this appears to have been fixed. The other issues, if you spot further problems, please open new issues and we'll work through them. Thank you. And then I'm going to give attribution to the folks who were involved in the discussion. All right. Um, so let me take one quick last look at the automated tests. So it's still running a new test build. Um, so I'm going to create a new issue. Um, plan for Gatsby to final. So it's a plan issue. This is going to be the next release, basically. We'll release RC1 now, and this will include any additional improvements. Um, hopefully, just maybe some documentation. Um, we might try and get some additional tests done in the next week. But uh, hopefully there won't be much, if any, changed from RC1. So this will be the first final release of version 2. First stable release of version 2. And then let's cross-link to the old meta issue. And then I'm going to set the two final issue as the parent of RC1. But then mention the draft meta issue, or sorry, the meta issue as a related issue, just so we don't lose that connection there. Um, have the tests finished yet? Nope. Um, okay, let's see. Anything else needed? Good status, all good there. Um, given that the tests had been passing already, I'm going to make the assumption, or that the tests on the change I had just merged had passed correctly. Um, I'm going to make the grand assumption that this works. I'm going to git tag 2.0.0 RC1. And I'm going to push. Oh, let me, before I do that, I'm going to test out the release notes. So, ah, beta 3 to RC1 using Matt Glamon's amazing triple org command. So there were two changes. Did it finish? It finished. Okay, good. So I'm going to go ahead and tag the release and then push up, uh, already pushed that up, push up the tag. So now on the project page, 
I can go down to here and add new release. Select the, I forgot to release beta 3. Um, let's do beta 3 first. Drupal.org, beta 2, beta 3. So beta 3 included a ton of changes. Let's just do that one real quick. This includes a large number of fixes from beta 2. Note a key fix was added to RC1 and it should be used instead of this release. And then I'll just do super seated, needed. How do you spell that word, computer? Superseded by RC1. That is primarily bug fixes. Make sure there were a couple of small things. So, bug fixes and that. Then I can go back and get my RC1 notes. Go back to re new release page. While it's creating beta 3, I'll just go ahead and create beta or release candidate 1. This uh, includes a key fix for the preview system um, and should be fully working now. Please open a new issue for any regressions or other bugs that are found. Um, resolves key issue in, in the preview system. So there we go. So now we'll have release candidate one out. So um, done. In the plan issue, mark fixed. Um, and then save. All right, so um, now have release candidate one available. And uh, hopefully that'll be the last bug fix needed. Uh, for Gatsby 2. We'll do some more testing over the next well, two days and I hope to have the final 2.0 out at the beginning of next week. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Hope everybody has a fantastic week and we'll see you then. Thank you, Damien.